When I was building models at JP Morgan, structure was everything. A messy model, instant rejection. In this video, I'll show you how to create a perfectly structured financial model that's clear, logical and ready for action. Let's dive in. So in the typical financial model, what we are trying to do is to figure out how the company would perform in the future, right? Like, for example, in this case uh, of McDonald's, we would like to see how future financial statements would look like. So when it comes to the structure of the financial model, it is broadly divided into two parts. One is the core financial statements. That is the primary objective of forecasting the financials, right? We would like to know how the income statement in the future would look like, balance sheet and cash flows. Because if we have these three statements, we will be able to figure out, analyze and, you know, do all the analysis that is required for valuation on the basis of these. Now, in order to create these three future financial statements, there are different supporting schedules that are also needed. Like for example, here we have revenue built up, cost built up. I'll come to each one of them one by one. But the idea here is that without the support of these schedules, you will not be able to make the core financial statements. So if you got the structure, the structure is divided into two parts. Income statement, balance sheets and cash flows, these are the core financial statements. And then we have the supporting schedules, revenue built up, cost built up, working capital and so on and so forth. Now let's get started by understanding each and every item which is listed here. So we'll go to the income statement first. So obviously, as I mentioned that when it comes to financial modeling, we are saying that we have uh, two parts to it within the each of the financial statements one is the historicals where we already have the data with us and on the basis of historicals we are trying to project the future financials right so this is one of the most important aspect of financial modeling and when it comes to income statement we are trying to go deep into each and every element right so when it comes to let's say forecasting the income statement we always start from the top like the top we have this total revenue numbers and in the case of mcdonald's you can see that mcdonald's revenue is divided into three different segments coming from three segments so how do you go about forecasting each and every segmental revenue for the future years so that's where your supporting schedule will come into picture so here we have this revenue built up statement where you know we go ahead and dissect each and every element of uh, the segment like for example you know this segments are divided into various geographies and you know how much is the yield as far as each of the restaurants within that geographies is concerned and how much is the yield how much is the growth and you know all of that combined together will give you the revenue for each of these segments so it's a pretty uh, you know exhaustive exercise but you cannot forecast the revenues of the future if you don't have the revenue built up tab so we segregate this into different tabs because just imagine you know if i keep all of it in the single you know uh, sheet itself then it will become too cluttered right and it will become uh, too deep so it might run into thousand or you know maybe two thousand rows and again it becomes super difficult for you to audit these uh, you know longish and deepish uh, sheets right so therefore you have to have separate tabs altogether like the revenue built up cost sheets etc so here we have discussed about the revenue built up statement. Now when it comes to the cost sheet, you know, you can see that the cost items are mentioned here within the income statement, right? So how do you go about forecasting all of that? So first thing first is you figure out what are the drivers, right? Typically when it comes to forecasting the cost, it could be related to, uh, you know, gross margins or, you know, uh, operating margins that can be used as a parameter to forecast. So and again, as I said, it's typically done in a separate sheet. So as you can see here, you know, when it comes to operating costs, you're trying to figure out food and paper cost in this as a percentage of sales by company operated restaurant. So you try to find the variables for each one of them and then you forecast accordingly. So that's again done in a separate sheet because you don't want to make your income sheet or income statement sheet cluttered, right? So here we have explained you about the cost sheet, right? Now, coming to another most important aspect of uh, this uh, 
financial model is the depreciation and amortization. So in this case of McDonald's, you know, depreciation and amortization is very small. In this case, you could have actually uh, used a very basic assumption to forecast the depreciation and amortization. Typically, when it comes to companies which are into manufacturing space or uh, that requires higher capital expenditure, you would have to do a very elaborative exercise of forecasting depreciation and amortization. And that's when you will need a separate tab for depreciation and capex, right? So that's what we have also done in the case of McDonald's. Just to show you that how useful it is to kind of segregate all this and forecast it in a more professional manner. So you calculate the depreciation and amortization in these two separate tabs one by one and then figure out how much is the depreciation amount. So that's what you are also doing in this separate sheets. Okay, depreciation capex and amortization and intangible assets. All right. And then. We have three more sheets as well. If you look at, you know, there's this other assets and liabilities, shareholders, equity and debt. So I'll just finish this income statement first and then I'll go ahead and discuss the other assets, shareholders, equity and debt. So when it comes to the other line items, you know, you can go ahead and uh, forecast it within the cost sheet as I have done it here. And uh, this interest expenses these are connected to debt, right? So they actually come from the debt sheet. I'll just discuss this in a moment. And uh, broadly with this, you'll have uh, all your income statement line items, you know, kind of forecasted with this. So as you can see, income statement typically use these type of uh, schedules, revenue built up, cost sheet, depreciation capex and amortization, okay? So these four sheets are uh, cumulatively creating the forecast for the income statement. Now let's go ahead and look at the balance sheet, right? And when you look at the balance sheet, you know, you will find that balance sheet consists of uh, two different parts, assets and liabilities. And when it comes to the assets, we have uh, assets which are related to current assets. Broadly, these three are the working capital items. And then we have the other current assets and then we have the property, plant and equipment. Okay, so how and why we would need supplementary sheets or supplementary uh, tabs for this is that when it comes to working capital, okay, you can uh, assume that these are again uh, forecasted from the different work tabs because this also requires different way of forecasting. Essentially, what we are trying to do in the case of working capital forecast is we figure out, you know, how overall cash cycle works in a typical company and on that basis we try to figure out each and every line item which are related to working capital. So working capital is nothing but current assets and current liabilities, right? So in the balance sheet, these are the current assets and then we also have the current liability items as well. So all of these are forecasted within the working capital tab, okay? And uh, when it comes to this property, plant and equipment, this again goes back to this depreciation capex tab because here we figure out, you know, how much is the overall investments in the future as well as how much is the overall uh, net property plant and equipment uh, value which we'll get in the future as well. Along with that, we'll also get the depreciation amount for each of these incremental assets which the company would buy. So likewise, we do the same for amortization as well. So balance sheet is again connected to depreciation capex and amortization as well. Right. And then there are other assets and liabilities section where, you know, those which uh, cannot be forecasted appropriately or, you know, those uh, who are that are very difficult for you to forecast are typically other assets and liabilities because you do not have much information about it. So as you can see here, majority of these forecasts are kept as constant, but a good idea would be to have a separate tab for this as well so that uh, you are aware that these are the ones which are kind of constant and you know they're not moving and it's very difficult for you to forecast them as well okay now coming to the liabilities and shareholders equity section we covered the current liabilities in the working capital schedule but when it comes to this portion this actually is more pertaining to the debt related items right and then we have the shareholders equity and these two are basically forecasted using two different tabs which are left and that is shareholders equity and debt. So in typical shareholders equity uh, work tab, what you try to do is you figure out how much is your uh, shares issuances and repurchases, stock option exercised, what will be the ending shareholders equity value, 
how much is the dividend are you going to pay so all of that type of forecast is typically done in the shareholders equity section and that is ultimately linked here to the balance sheet and then we have the final items which are from the debt related items right so here again there's another professional way of uh, figuring out the debt items we use a professional uh, you know cash sweep formula to figure out how much will be the line of credit and how much will be the ending debt we uh, try to simulate uh, you know the issuances and the repayments of debt in order to find out uh, the ending balances of the debt as well as uh, how much is the interest expense or the interest payments that are going to be made in the future years so with this debt schedule we get two things one is the ending values of debt and we also get the interest expense right and these interest expense are typically connected to the income statement here so if you go back here you will see that here this there is this income statement items right so interest expense items so interest expense is connected from the debt schedule and if you go back to the balance sheet you will see that these are coming from debt schedule so all in all you know without the help of these uh, tabs it's super super difficult for you to kind of create a integrated financial model uh, again i'm reiterating the reason that if you kind of create every schedule within the balance sheet or the income statement you will find it tough to audit as well so therefore it's important for you to keep it separate and finally when it comes to the cash flow statement cash flow statement is basically nothing but a direct reconciliation from the income statement and the balance sheet so you don't have to rely uh, on uh, different schedules for that but it's a reconciliation from the income statement and the balance sheet so that's how a typical structure of uh, a financial model looks like consists of two parts core financial statements right and then we have the supporting schedules as well so here a quick disclaimer that in this case of mcdonalds we have these many supporting schedules right but let's say if you are doing a, a financial model of a manufacturing company or for example an oil and gas company a revenue built up can be even more elaborate because where you could have you know assets one as a separate tab assets too as a separate tab you know because they will lead to uh, revenue items right so you might have more elaborate financial models in these cases but uh, in general you will find these are the core things which are available in a typical financial statement so before i end the video i would like you to have access to two most important resources that can help you jump start your career in financial modeling and here are those the first one is this website wallstreetmojo.com which we have created with so much of love and here you will have some of the best resources on financial modeling even we have put a full tutorial on how to create a financial model in excel step by step where we take this case study colgate from scratch so you'll have to download the annual report of colgate and then you know go ahead and create the full three statement financial model the way you saw in the case of mcdonald's the same way you will learn how to apply that using this free tutorial and guide on colgate financial model and not only this if you navigate on the left hand side you will see that it's a full scale of resources that you get access to and all of them are available for free so what are the benefits types three statement model processes how to go about creating the financial model what are the templates how do you format the financial model if you look at this ipo financial model you get access to the templates for free colgate uh i made model you have coinbase ipo model coursera ipo model alibaba ipo model so you know you get access to so much of resources on financial modeling that you will not have to go anywhere else to actually learn financial modeling okay so that's my number one recommendation of resources the second resource is that if you want to learn financial modeling professionally from people like us you know you can have access to our courses on financial modeling and there are two ways in which you can learn financial modeling from us one is that you can opt for the self study course where you know we have taken this uh, case study on mcdonalds and created step by step financial model from scratch so it's a 14 hour uh, tutorial and you can get access to it and you can you know learn at your own pace the second approach is that you can opt for the live classes as well where we 
take the live classes on financial modeling and it's more of an immersive program where you are expected to create a financial model as well and uh, submit it to us and um, we will guide you as to how it's done and once you are um, able to submit that model to us we will review it and give us give our own set of feedback so this is more of an immersive program when it comes to learning financial modeling so you have all the options uh, of you know how to go about learning financial modeling so with that uh, let me conclude this video tutorial and i hope you enjoyed and learned something about financial modeling here and if you did please do like and subscribe our channel it's a great help to us as well as other students who are like-minded and want to make a career in finance so i would like to see you again in our next tutorial on financial modeling until then thank you so much and have a nice day